You're probably aware of the numerous animated Tekken movies, but did you know they made a live-action one? Make that two live-action ones. Before I start talking about the movie, I just want to clarify. I played the original trilogy quite a lot back in the day, but moved on to DOA and never really went back. So my knowledge of Tekken is going to be mostly about the first few. Anyway, Tekken is a 2009 action film from director Dwight H. Little. In the not-too-distant future, the world is sent into chaos after the terror wars. Governments fell and the world is now run by eight corporations. Already I can see they've taken some liberties. This should be Mishima Zaibatsu, not Tekken. The American territories fell to the mightiest corporation of all. Amazon! Tekken. Okay, Tekken. Once a year, the Tekken Company, a subsidiary of MomCorp, holds a fight competition called Iron Fist. Those companies were collectively known as Iron Fist. The translation of Tekken from Japanese is Iron Fist. So that means Iron Fist holds a competition called Iron Fist and all these companies have joined together to call themselves Iron Fist. What? Outside the walls of Tekken, it's the post-apocalyptic slums called the Anvil. Out here, parkour happens! Jin Kazama is running away from some bad guys. Oh no, we haven't retired this line yet. That's gonna hurt. What's next, a yo mama joke? After some kicking and jumping on roofs, Jin gets cornered by the Tekken shock troopers. Thankfully, some other bad guys show up to get shot, and Jin hides behind some debris. After about five seconds, they give up looking for him. This matte painting is the anvil. Jin goes to Trader Joe's and gives him something he stole. A top secret Tekken internet thingy. He gets paid in blue Monopoly money. He heads out into the street and oh my god, what have they done to Shang Tsung? I know that's Haihachi Mishima's hair, but man, it looks silly in reality. He announces this year's Iron Fist tournament will be held in Tekken City. Jin visits the local bar and buys some contraband. He buys the most important thing he can afford. How about coffee? Coffee. <laughs> coffee is serious business. How do you think he can run this fast? He also gets an orange and some chocolate. Hihachi is talking to his son Kazuya. They're setting things up for the tournament. Jin stops home to see his mom. She gets mad because he's risking his life running anti tekken stuff. He then channels Doug. You know what? Forget it. I'm out of here. He runs into his girlfriend, I think? Kara. He gives her chocolate, which immediately leads to deep dickin'. The smuggler's den is raided by the Tekken tag team. Jin hears the helicopter and knows they're looking for him. He goes home, but they blow up Mama. He digs through the rubble and remembers his mother trained him to be a badass. He also finds something from Tekken, so now he knows where to direct his anger. He heads to an open call for a slot in the Iron Fist tournament. Jin has to fight martial law in order to get into Tekken. They go in to see the fighting is already in progress. Tank Abbott bails, so the only one left is Jin. The guys at the bar notice Jin's on TV. They, of course, have no faith in him. He's gonna be roadkill. That is until he starts doing this. Haikiba! Jimkata! Law has the magical ability to make his gloves disappear and reappear. Law pretty much knocks Jin out. Just when it looks like he's lost, Jin has a flashback where he gets a pep talk from his dead mother which gives him a second wind and leads him to victory. So Jin pairs up with Steve Fox in order to fight an Iron Fist. What's your name? Jin. Jin? What's your name? He didn't hear the announcers or the crowd. Maybe he thought Beefeater was a new sponsor. They take the prison bus into Tekken City. Meanwhile, Butt City. The Williams sisters give Kazuya an awkward sexing. What is happening to my penis? Well, I guess they like to keep it in the family. Hihachi is mad at his son for not taking the tournament more seriously. Fox drops Jin off at Tekken training. They then go over the character roster. I mean fighters for the tournament. Raven, Eddie Gordo, Dragonov, Anna and Nina Williams, Christy Montero, Miguel Roja, Yoshimitsu, Brian Fury, and now, Jin. Wait, so that means there are 10 slots in a standard bracket tournament. 
That doesn't work. There's going to be an odd one out. Oh, well. Now we get training montage. They sure keep it chilly in there. Fox gives Jin some fancy pants. Jin is instantly attracted to Christy. You know, it's rude to stare. Sorry, I was just admiring your toes. Wasn't expecting Jin to be a foot guy. Spread your toes, it's, um, it's impressive. That night at the start of the tournament. Staring at my ass is a good way to get yours kicked. Oh, he's an ass man too. All the fighters line up to see who's gonna fight. Tekken has begun! First up, it's Eddie Gordo and Zack. I mean, Raven. They do some flippy fighting, and Raven wins. Next up, Roha and Jin. Jin gets some good shots until Roha puts him on the ground. You know what you are? The jungle baby? Why is the bridge made out of plastic wood? Jin's losing until he unleashes his secret weapon. Flashbacks of his mom reminding him how to fight. He does some more flips and breaks Roha's leg, instantly putting him out of commission. Oh wait, no? Oh, never mind. Okay, he kicks him off the platform and then beats him into a fine paste. All right, now it's over. He's walking back after the fight and there she goes smuggling hams. Usually when you see butt cleavage, it's when the sink needs fixing. Evil McEvil Chin congratulates Jin on his victory. Christy is now super excited by Jin destroying the gym equipment. Later that night, she sneaks him out so they can go to a dance club. Kazuya discovers who Jin's mother is. They go to the club and is there a draft in here? After making out on the dance floor, they sneak back to the arena. They fool around some more, but Christy leaves because she may have to fight tomorrow. Jin closes the door and gets ambushed. This scene is with a strobe, so I'm not going to show it because editing it together is going to mess with anyone who's epileptic. Essentially, the Williams sisters give him a good beating. Christy hears this and comes back, which scares him off. She takes him to Fox to get patched up. Jin gives Fox the card he found, and he tells him that his mother was in Iron Fist. The sisters come back to tell Kazuya they failed. He takes it out on this guy. Why are you beating me? I didn't do anything wrong. The next day, Christy has to fight Nina. Jin figured out it was the sisters who ambushed him. So Christy gives Nina a tremendous thrashing. Jin now has to fight Yoshimitsu. Shouldn't it be Anna fighting Yoshimitsu? I mean, Yoshimitsu hasn't fought anyone else yet. Oh, uh, whatever. Fox gives Jin the gloves from the game. My old power gloves. Okay, this is one of the problems I had with the game. Why is Yoshimitsu the only one who gets a sword? And he also gets to wear armor. Kazuya is tired of his father, so he has him imprisoned and takes over Tekken. In the crowd, we see Kara's watching. I wonder if she'd be rooting for Jin if she knew what he was up to last night. Jin almost loses, and uh, you know what happens. Hihachi sets off an alarm, and the team try to sneak Jin out. They get caught, and Kazuya puts them all in prison, even the other fighters. They fight off the miscellaneous henchmen, and escape into the Tekken factory, where they find Hihachi. They rescue him and head to the Tao sector. Uh-oh, I guess Raven isn't fighting tomorrow. They go to the anvil to rest. Hihachi tells Jin he knew his mother. He tells him who his father is, and that he saved her from his son. Kazuya. My son, your father. This makes Jin another heir to the Tekken house. No time for small talk. Kaboom! They kill Fox and disable Christy. Kazuya then has Hihachi executed. Well, if you didn't want this result, I guess you shouldn't have thrown him off a cliff. With Hihachi dead, he announces Tekken is now a fight to the death. Brian Fury has to fight Dragonov. He pretty much pulls his head off. Jin doesn't want to fight, so Kazuya makes him a threat. Imagine what I'll do to her if you don't fight. I'll make her wear pants that fit. Oh, Raven's alive. Just so he can give Jin a pep talk. All night long, let me see that song. Someone smeared strawberry preserves all over his fists. Jin then slow walks into the arena to fight Fury. There's a problem. Fury's really a cyborg. Wasn't Jack the cyborg? So Jin gets knocked around a lot. Jin then, yes he does. His mom taught him to jump off a cliff? Now Kazuya goes into the ring as the final boss. Kazuya also gives him a solid beating. 
He wears them down and almost loses until Christy causes a distraction. This time, Jin does not need the power of flashbacks and takes out Kazuya. Jin is now the owner of Tekken. He goes for a power walk and ow, ow, ow. Christy then does a voiceover. That the true legacy of Tekken was only just beginning. Well, they did make a sequel, right? Oh, it's a prequel. Never mind. Hey, Jin, you weren't cheating on me with that hot brunette, were you? Tekken was shot in Shreveport, Louisiana for about $30 million. The initial concepts for this movie started way back in the early 2000s, when studios were looking to greenlight movies based on video games. Namco Bandai sold the movie rights to Crystal Sky Pictures for $60 million. It was supposed to be shot in 2003 for a 2005 release, but that never happened. After going through a series of directors, they landed on Dwight H. Little. He previously directed martial arts heavy action movies, Rapid Fire, and Mark for Death, so he was a good fit. As a way to make the film authentic, they hired martial artists who could also act. Kung Lee, Latif Crowder, and Gary Daniels, to name a few. For the stunt coordinator, they hired Cyril Raffelli. He worked on many action films like Kiss of the Dragon and Double Team. One of his biggest roles was Damien, one of the leads in the insane parkour action film District 13. For Jin, they hired John Fu, a skilled martial artist and actor. The movie was picked up for theatrical distribution in most of the world, but in the U.S., it went straight to DVD. The director of the Tekken series, Katsuhiro Harada, called the movie terrible. Crystal Sky still had the rights to the series, and in 2014, they released the prequel, Tekken 2, Kazuya's Revenge, starring Kane Kasugi as Kazuya. While Tekken was not as faithful as fans would have liked, I really didn't think it was that bad. There's plenty of nods to the games, although yes, they did change quite a lot. The fight sequences were awesome, with the exception of the over-editing. I've seen Little's other action films, and the fights in those are very fluid. Not sure why he felt the need to do the hyperactive editing here. It takes away from the skill of the fighters when we can't see what they're doing. I think fans would have been willing to overlook the changes if they got fight sequences on par with something like John Wick instead of Gamer. Another problem was almost every fight with Jin was the same. He'd be on the verge of losing until he has a flashback and then miraculously comes back to win the fight. Still, I think it's an enjoyable movie. Fu was a great lead, Luke Goss is vastly underappreciated, and I will watch just about anything with Gary Daniels. Beyond that, what else is there to say but Christy Montero's pants? <laughs> Sorry, I was just admiring your toes. Excuse me?